With the band playing and the race goers singing along in the background, we're at the end of the second day of racing of Royal Ascot 2019. And joining me to discuss the day's action is David Jennings. DJ, well, it was another wet one. Wetter than a Wednesday at Wexford, I would say. What's with the rain, Hanson? Can you not stop this? No. Oh my God. It's like I didn't think it could get more torrential than yesterday. And before the Prince of Wales today, it was... Like, if you were out for two seconds, you got absolutely soaked. Um, it did take a little bit away from the occasion because most people were inside. The atmosphere wasn't as good as it should have been for a race of that calibre. What can you do? Hopefully, I believe, I, I stand corrected, but I think it's to improve towards the weekend. So, fingers crossed, and I'm hoping with the good weather, my tipping will improve as well. Well, you see, I, it's because I've sorted it. Yeah. You said, you know, could I not sort it out? I have sorted it, so the rest of the week's going to be good Yeah, now. it's yeah. going to be good, yeah. But the tipping's not been on form, no? Uh, it's been a struggle. Uh, my banker of the week was Ickward in the Queen Mary today, and anybody that watched Ickward would have been watching the race going, where is she? What colour? She's in blue, she's in a white cap. Where, is that her? No, that's not... Where, no, she didn't start. She didn't oh. even come out of the stall. She did an uncanny impression of Accidental Agent and planted herself at the start. So when your banker of the whole meeting stands still, you know that's not good it doesn't set the tone for the day so no it was a disaster not great but any better in the st james's palace great uh, race no so not not st james's palace sorry it wasn't at all uh it was the prince of wales, prince of wales. thank you very much yeah get me out of trouble there uh kraken race uh, really enjoyed it uh, crystal ocean was one of these horses you just wondered was that group one at the very highest level just beyond them but i think with the with the, when the rain came when it turned into a stamina test over 10 furlongs he really came into his own it was a brilliant ride from Frankie. He was in the perfect place at the perfect time. He was ready to pounce. A lot of peas there. And uh, it was a thoroughly professional performance from a thoroughly professional horse. Um, a real enjoyable um, home straight. Both of them, given their all, Magical ran another terrific race. You know, she's a very, very good filly. This probably was our one day to really shine. You know, there was no one able in the lineup and she couldn't do it. Volgeist got caught out of position at the wrong time and, and stayed on a little bit, probably wants better ground. And see at Glass, uh, William Haggis won the Duke of, uh, Duke of Cambridge the next race. And even when he was interviewed afterwards, all he could talk about was how angry he was for running see at Glass. He was really beating himself up really bad. And he was after having a Royal Ascot winner. So um, it tells you what he was thinking. I don't think... That was the real sea of class. I think you'll see a different horse in the King George, and uh, what a race that could be. Yeah, well, he was umming and ahhing before the race, wasn't he? He sort of went out this morning, and then, you know, when we heard the news he was going to run, we thought, oh, great, but, mm. yeah, clearly beaten by the ground. Yeah, yeah, I'd say she is a far, far better filly than that. She even travelled with her usual zest, turned into the home straight, she pulled out, and you're kind of thinking, usually away she goes, like we've seen in the arc last year, but uh, just wasn't to be today. It's very, very hard for, for a horse and a filly to have their first start in such a competitive race where they go so quick, hunting horn turned it into a real test, and to ask her to win a race like that in the running style that she has, it was a huge ask. I wouldn't be one bit disappointed with Sia Class. I think, come the King George, if the ground is decent, with that run under her belt, if it hasn't bottomed her out, um, I'd be very interested in her. I th still think she's top class. There we go. You heard it here first, DJ. King George tip. Keep the faith. Um, uh, talking to William Haggis, obviously, as you say, he had the winner of the next race, uh, and his second winner of this week, with following 10 years I believe mm. without a winner at the meeting so like London buses two come along at once yeah and for a trainer like that I was surprised that he hadn't had more Royal Ascot winners like he is really top class and uh, Danny Tudhope like he was 100 to 1 at the start of the week with Labrox to be top jockey mm. Paddy Power I, I asked a few of the lads in there Paul Binfield and that and I asked them they hadn't even quoted him in their market they got a request and somebody backed him at 66 to 1. So he's now had three winners. He's level with uh, Ryan Moore. Like, it's going to be a huge ask for him to be top jockey. But if he gets one or two more, what a story that is. Like, he's 33. I think a few years ago he was in the running to be champion apprentice and he broke his wrist. Mm. So he's always been held in high regard and, and he's picking the biggest stage of all to show how good he is. That was a terrific ride on Move Swiftly. Like, he really timed the challenge perfectly. And all three of his rides, Adeb, uh, Move Swiftly, and Laura Glitters especially, he was so patient, took no interest in the first half of the race and just timed his challenge to perfection, which is very hard to do on that type of ground. So it's been a great week for Danny. Absolutely. And representing the north of England now as well, yeah, which is great. Yeah. Very shy lad, didn't want to, like I interviewed after the race, didn't want to give himself any praise at all, was deflecting everything away. Probably the complete opposite to me, really. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent, yeah. Very shy and retiring is our yes. DJ. Um, any other talking points from today? Yeah, I suppose um, when you go through the card, like it was one of these um, days where 
after a couple of the races you'd be kind of saying to yourself yeah well that kind of made sense a fac second in the hunk cup last year off the same mark this time and uh deservedly held on you know it was a real tight finish with clon Cowles and uh it was a good training performance for Charlie Hills, who had a really disastrous day. Yes, I'd say he went into yesterday, Phoenix of Spain, Batash, bang, 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 going to have two winners, set me up for the week, and he got none, and he probably didn't think a fact was going to be his first winner of the week, but uh, really, like, tenacious type of display from a fact who was verging on group class, I would have thought, last year, and maybe now can make the breakthrough. It was a typical Hunt Cup, and he won a six or seven, could have won yeah. inside the final 100 yards, but it was to be a fact's day. Yeah, and, and Charlie Hills, I must say, probably wasn't expecting Afak to be his, uh, his first winner. I was down there last week, very privileged to be down there. You know, they had high hopes, obviously, for Batas, particularly Phoenix of Spain. They said it was a monster at mm. home, so they really weren't expecting. Well, uh, they didn't even mention Afak. Afak uh, might have been his first winner of the week, but it might not be his last. No, He's no. got a few fancied horses later on in the week. He has got a few fancied horses, one of which I particularly like is Kadem in the Commonwealth Cup. Yeah, you've heard good things. I have heard good things, yeah. He's, he's a lovely horse as well. They sort of said he's really sort of relaxed this year. He was a bit, a bit of a hothead last year, but he's relaxed this Viewers year. Viewers are frantically writing down his name. Spell it for us, Sam. K-H-A-A-D-E-M. Oh, very impressive. I didn't think you'd get that. That's why I asked you. <laughs> Spelling is one of my strong points. I don't have many of them. Okay, yeah. Okay. Anyway, on that note, thank you very much for joining us. We hope you've enjoyed all the racing from Royal Ascot on day two. Join us again for day three.